Driving at Home with ABOR's Housing Economist, Claire Losey. Awesome. We're here with another Driving at Home with Dr. Claire Losey. Claire, thanks for having me back. It's been a minute since I've been able to record with you, so I'm glad to be here with you again. Well, thanks for hopping on. Yeah. And so it's another week of labor market stats, I understand. What did we hear at a national level is happening with jobs? So in essence, the labor market data came back hotter than expected last week. So job openings, which the data was released on Tuesday, came in at 9.61 million, which was significantly higher than expected. The consensus expectations for job openings to be about 8.8 million. And then meanwhile, in September, employers added about 336,000 jobs to the economy, which was nearly double consensus expectations. And September's figure also represents a significant uptick from August, upwardly revised 227,000 gain and the strongest gain in jobs since January. Meanwhile, the unemployment rate ticked up slightly to 3.8%, and wages were a little bit softer than expected, but still relatively strong, coming in at 4.2% year-over-year and 0.2% month-over-month. So overall, the news we received on the jobs front put upward pressure on the 10-year Treasury yield, and we saw that the 10-year T yield reached highs, record highs over the past 16 years of about 4.9% on Friday. Because as we've learned through many, many weeks of these discussions now, (laughs) the hotter jobs is not as hot or cool as it sounds. It's actually a challenge when it comes to managing the overall inflation number. Since we're in this higher rate environment, and especially because part of the reason why the Fed has been inducing these rate hikes has been to try to temper the labor market, to cool things off. What we're really seeing is just strong reactions to the downside, so to speak, when we see hotter than expected jobs data. Yeah. And so, you know, naturally agents are thinking about what that means in terms of, uh, you know, continued inflation driving continued higher than, than we would like mortgage interest rates. But it's sort of ironic because we're seeing on the one hand that these Hot jobs numbers mean that that could potentially extend the higher interest rates than we like. But at the same time, hot job numbers means people are employed. They are still earning at a higher level than they were many several years ago. And their cash, you know, their spending power remains elevated, which is powerful in the context of the marketplace and how high prices rose for a few years as well. Right. And then also on the plus side, the potential for recession has dissipated significantly over the course of 2023, largely in part because of just this very strong labor market. Yeah. And the idea that even if we were to see a recession, it would be very different in nature from the typical recession, right, in which unemployment spikes, in which the labor market really is at the forefront, right, of the downturn. Yeah. So we can't have our cake and eat it to have both... (laughs) Lower inflation and no risk of recession. Right now, we're looking at a lower, significantly lower risk of recession, which I think is a positive, obviously, in terms of the market's response to the economy overall. A challenge for us, given that means that we're going to continue to operate in these elevated mortgage interest rates, likely. Right. But we should also add, just on the subject of mortgage rates, ongoing geopolitical tensions, of course, evolving news over the past several days with the conflict in the Middle East, that has put downward pressure now on yields. We remember, listeners will remember that the price and the yield of 10-year treasury notes are inversely related. Mm. So anytime anytime the demand for 10-year treasury notes increases, right, that's going to raise prices and therefore drive the yield down. And that's what we're seeing right now with these geopolitical tensions is that investors are flocking to safe haven assets Mm. like treasuries. So now we have these counteracting forces of the stronger jobs report that we saw last week pushing up the 10-year T-yield versus the most recent news about geopolitical tensions pushing the yield down. Yeah. And, you know, just to kind of simplify something, as I'm thinking about the conversations that agents are having with their clients, the complexity of all of this speaks to the idea or notion that you're going to game the mortgage interest rate system 
is is not an ideal one. And, you know, really pushing back on buyers that say, I'm going to wait for that interest rate to be right where I want it is untenable. And I think agents can speak to look at all of the push and pull of how these rates are determined and all of the outside factors, even halfway across the globe that drive such potentially dramatic impact on these rates. Realistically, we need to focus on what the rate is now, what your buying power is now, and what's available within that buying power now and find you a home. I think that, you know, we want agents to feel empowered to understand the push and pull of those rates through these conversations, but really also to drive home to you the complexity of that is not a game that most consumers should be playing. Right. And just as you are highlighting, Emily, the level of uncertainty about the future of the 10-year treasury yield, not just the magnitude of the yield itself, but also the direction, right? Right. Again, the introduction over the past several days of this this geopolitical Total conflict. other set of complexity that right. we really may or may not have any impact on. The other aspect of this that comes to mind is, you know, you're having this conversation with a buyer. You're talking about how complex it is to try to, you know, monitor and manage interest rates and nail it just the way you want it. The other aspect of that conversation, I think, is a body of research that Dr. Lozzi presented as well, which is the buy versus rent index that looks at the longer you wait, the, the more you're shorting yourself on being in the money in terms of the wealth building opportunity that comes from ownership as well. Right. Especially right now, as we're seeing in the market, that stocks are underperforming, right. at least relative to recent levels. So comparable assets, financial assets per se, that you would otherwise invest in aren't necessarily yielding the highest return. Right. So I'm looking at a market where there are more listings than there have been for a long time. Still not enough listings at every price point, but still a little flexibility as compared to what there was. An interest rate that's not totally ideal, but is within reason in the context of historical interest rates. And a conversation about being in the money and the value of ownership. I see a lot of upside and opportunity for agents who are able to frame up that conversation. And we hope that the resources we're providing help you do that. And I would mention, too, time. Ability of, I don't have to do this right this yes, minute, but home we hope you do it now. Bit, yeah, home <laughs> spending a little bit longer on the market. Yeah, yeah. Not feeling the pressure of, like, within hours, you need to get an offer in now. Right. Um, that That's great. That's good conversation. I think gives good narrative for our agents to think about when they're in the market. What's happening specifically in the market this week? What are our week-over-week week numbers like? So as we talked about on last week's podcast, at the end of any given month, that that final week of any given month, the stats tend to increase mm. as agents and, and buyers and sellers are trying to get we went through under contract. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Under contract, everything hammered out by the end of the month. So since we're comparing the first week of the month to the last week of September, Naturally, our stats are down this week. Both closed sales and leases were down about 32%. And active listings for both residential sales and leases were relatively flat. Pending sales were also flat, but pending leases were down about 18%. Yeah, this is the challenge in looking at week-over-week stats and the reason that I always sort of hesitate for us to release more reporting on these numbers because they're not, in fact, uh, helpful. If you don't add all the context of what's right. happening. Yeah. If you just track, if you just look at one week without having the context right. for the other weeks, then it becomes... Or the season even. Right. right. It becomes a little bit more difficult to interpret. And we certainly encourage our listeners to tune in next week when we're going to unpack our monthly stats for, for sure. September, which will paint a little bit of a clearer picture. And maybe market. to that end too, I mean, I might just mention this is the time of year that ABOR is planning for next year's activity and budgeting, et cetera. We're having a lot of conversation about how to produce reporting, market reporting that most meets the agent's needs. And um, we've done some surveying. We've been in conversation with you guys about it. But to the extent that you would like to give individual feedback on that, you are welcome to email communications at abor.com. Let Claire and I know both what we can do in this podcast, but also what types of reporting um, we can create on a more regular basis as both Unlock MLS and ABOR to empower you guys in the conversations that you're having in the marketplace. And just to add to Emily's point, to create an environment, to to kind of create a, an opportunity for a conversation among agents and for me to be able to talk directly with you, I will be holding office hours, kind of quote unquote, 
next week, next Monday from 2 to 4 in the afternoon here at ABOR. So at ABOR headquarters off Spicewood next Mon- Monday, Monday, 2 to 4 p.m. Dr. Lucy's just going to hang out and wait for you guys in the member lounge. Is that That's right? That's right. Cool. Yeah, and we'll chat whatever's on your mind. Feel free to yeah. let me know. And, and this is great because people like to ping Claire and link- LinkedIn or send her messages via email. And those are cool. But uh, we're really trying to consolidate her opportunity to have conversation and have it with your peers. Because so often you're asking a question that another peer has also. We want to try to elevate those questions in conversation with many of you as opposed to one to one. Exactly. And I'll be hosting those office hours monthly and we'll time it such that they're after the release of the previous month's housing stats. Because Perfect. I know that that will be at the top of everyone's. Maybe place. we'll even throw a snack in there. I mean, <laughs> a, <laughs> late, a late Monday economy talk yeah. could be a little we risky. Some cookies. We Perhaps some a sugar. coffee will be in, in order. Well, uh, Claire, I think that's awesome. I think that that will really benefit the membership. And I hope you guys will take advantage of it. And please do give us that feedback on how we can continue to improve the reporting that we make available to you and the format that you'd like to see it in. I think that's all for this week. Thanks so much for your time. Thanks for having me. Take care, guys. 